We're going to get more cases no matter what. What we need to do with containment and mitigation is to blunt that curb. On any given day, mm -hmm. you can't say, oh, we've blunted the numbers, because the numbers are still going up no matter what you do. Right. It's how much up they go that is the issue. Very sobering words from the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, as the situation continues to evolve quickly here and around the globe. One challenge is keeping the numbers straight, all of them. Let's go to the billboard, as we like to call it. Bill Hemmer, anchor of Bill Hemmer Reports. Hey, Harris, good afternoon again. I, I want to show you some of the maps we put together on the map behind me here from the World Health Organization. Uh, what viewers are about to see is the state of the virus from three weeks ago today. And then we'll take you through current time and we'll give you an idea about the numbers based on uh, what we can report. This is February 24th, okay, three weeks ago Monday. Uh, we highlighted China, Iran, Italy, and the United States. Here in China three weeks ago, you had about 78,000 cases. In Iran, it was only 61. In Italy, three weeks ago, it was 229, and here in the U.S., it was 53. Now, two weeks ago today, we'll change this map and show you how they adjust. About 80,000 in China. But look what happens in Iran and Italy. In Iran, you had 2,300. Pre week prior, it was 61. So you jumped to 2,300 in Iran. In Italy, it was 229. Now you're up around 2,000 cases. Uh, here at home, you're at 64, up from 53. So a jump of about 11. But again, as you just heard from Dr. Fauci a moment ago, Harris, these numbers are going to change here in the U.S. once they start continue more testing here. Now, I want to take you two weeks ago today. So now we're on March 9th, uh, a week ago today, I should say. And again, you're right around 80,000 in China. So just, just watch this part of your screen here, okay? Two weeks ago, 80,000. Three weeks ago, you're at 77,000. So the numbers in China have been somewhat consistent here. However, in Iran, look what you do here. You go up three times in Iran. In Italy, from 9,200 a week prior, you're at 2,000. So again, that's about three and a half times in the week prior. In the U.S., from 64, 53 to 64 cases here in the U.S. Now you come up to today, March 16th. And again, the number around China is still about the same. But look what happens here in Iran, Harris. You're at 14,000. That, that, that's double from what was reported just a week ago. In Italy, you're almost at 25,000 cases today, up from, well, it's three times what you were about a week ago. And here at home in the U.S., we're now at 1,600 cases, give or take, up from 472 the week prior. Now, you can find different information, and you can find, let me just shift here to show you one more thing. You can find it. What we're trying to do is how we can put all this information, all these numbers together. So we're working the World Health Organization. We're working with Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland as well. And what they're doing is they're trying to tabulate the numbers around the world. The deep red is the most severe cases, China. Over here in Iran, Europe now big concern, and also here in the United States. So, Harris, we're going to watch this, and we'll take you through the numbers as we tabulate them. But, again, I want to point out, 175,000 confirmed. You have 77,000 recovered thus far. Harris, that's very important. When you think about the White House briefing on Saturday, of those who were tested in South Korea, 96% have come back negative. Yep. We hope for more of that. So. Yeah. We also hope for more of that other number that I set off the top of this hour, those who've recovered. That's extremely yes. important as well. No doubt. All of it. Great mm -hmm. job, Bill Hemmer. Thank you. Sure. Uh, a government official is telling the Associated Press the first participant in a clinical trial for a potential coronavirus vaccine will receive an experimental dose today. However, the Surgeon General is cautioning we cannot count on that to solve our current crisis. Watch. What people need to know is a vaccine's not going to save the day, at least this first go round. The vaccine will be helpful if we can get it developed, uh, assuming coronavirus comes back again next year and next season. That, of course, keeping with what many doctors have told us, like Doc Siegel on the set here with me, uh, that it's around, just like the flu, to stay. We'll see. Uh, two pharmaceutical companies confirm they will soon begin testing a drug used to treat rheumatoid arthritis on patients with severe COVID-19. Medical panel comes back now. Dr. Mark Siegel, six feet away from me here, social distancing on set. Nicole Sapphire and Amy Compton Phillips in Washington State. Great to have all three of you. Hi, Harris. Uh, I want to go now to another live, if we can, another live question. So we've got a lot of technology working for us this hour. Uh, Catherine Barker Long in Marion, Texas. Hello, Catherine. Good to see you. I'm glad you're smiling. 
What is your question for the doctors? Yeah, thanks for taking my uh, question. I live in a uh, small town, Marion, Texas. It's right outside of San Antonio. And I've only heard of three cases right now. And I'm wondering how the coronavirus is so much worse than the flu. Doc Siegel, would you like to take that? Well, you know, she's interesting because she's in San Antonio, Texas. Maybe there's more social distancing there to begin with. The, the weather, I feel, may play a role. But the way it's worse than the flu is we don't have a vaccine for it. We don't have a powerful antiviral treatment like we have for the flu. And we're seeing a fairly large percentage of cases, especially in elderly people and people with severe co-illnesses, co like heart disease, like severe lung disease, like diabetes, these patients and cancer, these patients are getting very sick with this virus and they develop a certain kind of viral pneumonia that can be life threatening. And we're seeing more people die right now, as far as we know. So the severe complications of this virus are what bothers us. You, you know, one thing that I like about your question, Catherine, before we let you go, is that you're alluding to the fact that we really haven't paid much attention to the flu. And it has killed a fair amount of Americans this year, as it does every year. Thank you for your question from Marion, Texas. Uh, Jody P. has a question. She asks, what is the treatment for COVID-19? Dr. Sapphire? Well, we don't actually have a, a, a known treatment right now, and that actually is why a lot of people are worrying about this, a lot of panic going on. With the flu, it's the same thing, but we do have an antiviral that has been proven to work, to work for that. There are actually clinical trials right now for uh, various antivirals to see its effectiveness against COVID-19. They're also testing out utilizing antibodies from them, those people that have recovered to see if we could instill that into currently active infections to see if it helps. And, you know, everyone's kind of trying various different things right now. There's HIV drugs, Ebola drugs, and various other drugs being utilized to see if it potentially can help us get through this pandemic. All right, Dr. Compton Phillips, I'll come to you first next round. Everybody sit by. We are seeing it across America. Americans with high anxiety about so many aspects of COVID-19. Fear of the unknown is driving people to stockpile food and supplies, some of them even fighting. I don't know if you saw some of that on social media this weekend. Leaving shelves at supermarkets and retailers bare. Up next, answers to your questions about dealing with the psychological aspect of the virus.